Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where it's a new day for me. I have a few more a few more hours of uh, Mass Effect 3 I'd like to play uh, before I start playing Horizon Zero Dawn all day. <laughs> welcome, Commander Shepard. Let's see. Please select a destination. Puerto, we already Citadel. Are we areas tagged of interest to you? Are highlighted on the elevator We're at the Presidium menu. Commons. One moment. Excuse me, let's go to the embassy. We'll go check in with, uh... Now arriving at Presidium oh, this guy. But what I need is proofs. Ah, uh, yeah. But those assumptions merely leave my son stranded oh, at enemy territory. Oh, he's a war but now they will be alive. The suggest he has also offered an invitation to the Krogan. I fully understand the situation. Of course I read through the names of the dead every day, but... Please! Please, a few more minutes of searching could mean a lifetime of peace for my family. Hi. <clears throat> Someone in your family is MIA? My son, Bilal and bureaucratic compassion seems to be in short supply. I am Ambassador Dominic Osoba. My son's squad returned from their mission on Benning without him. I found them drinking, but they won't even look me in the eye. I can offer a bounty for any information. If Balao's alive, we want him home. If he's dead, then... Then we can begin to mourn him. If I find anything, I'll let you know. Thank you. Either way, you will set my mind at ease. Yes. Um, also, it looked like in the in the upgrade. I don't know why, but it looks like he has like Cheeto dust all over his face. I think it's supposed to be a texture to like. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. A texture to like make his skin like darker. Or maybe I'm just being really insensitive and it's a skin condition, but it looks like he's got like orange streaks on his face. I feel like it's something that like tried to, that was like, it got popped out, kind of popped out in clarity after the upgrade, you know, like in the, for the legendary edition. Hanar! Jellyfish. Oh, kitty. I fed you. You're fine. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, hello, ma'am. Ma We've had this discussion, young lady. You're to call me Teresa. Maybe my son didn't have the chance to marry you because of this damn war. But you're still family in my book. Nothing will ever change that. I. Of course. Please. This. Is heartbreaking. You're in your break if you want. Treat you to lunch. What do you say? I would love that, Teresa. Thank you. Either this Asari is actually well. Okay, so so she said daughter-in-law in the first instance, right? Teresa call said that you remind me of my daughter-in-law, um, and now she's like. My son isn't able, wasn't able to marry you, but you're still family in my book, you know. So either this Asari does just look just like her, look like the actual daughter-in-law, or she is the actual daughter or the daughter-in-law. And now this woman keeps like her memory keeps like bouncing around, you know. So right now, like she can remember a little bit, it seems, but like that's so hard. It's so hard to be. Dealing with somebody who their memory's just all over the place, right? Like, imagine how she feels. Imagine how the Asari feels, like having to deal with this every day, not sure what she's gonna remember. If you know what I mean, and if if she's a stranger, like that, I don't know if that's worse or better. Where it's just like your heart would break, you know, for this for this individual. Let's see. I don't think there's anything new with Bailey. You should decorate more, my dude. You got all this space like a dance floor right here. It never rains, but it pours, eh, Shepard? 
That bad, huh? Things here are getting mm. tense. So many refugees scuttling about. Rumors flying about the war. People are walking around eyeballing each other, and we can't keep up with the reports on suspicious behavior. What's the Citadel's pulse regarding the war? I think all the reports are starting to sink in. You can only live in denial so long. You either wake up or die. Either way. Yeah. You know, one good thing about people having their heads up their asses is the quiet. No, there's no more quiet. Everybody's openly suspicious of everybody else, and they're not timid about yelling about it. Yeah, especially with, like, like normally you'd be like, well, obviously, like, the Reapers are. <laughs> like, you could tell if we were invaded by, like, a Reaper, or, you know, the Geth, or, um, a Husk, <laughs> you know. But with the indoctrination thing, that's where it becomes a big issue. Is the immigration situation any better? <laughs> it's worse. The more destruction the Reapers sow, the more ships come looking for salvation. The strain in our resources is overwhelming. You got loved ones out there? Somewhere. Ex-wife I lost track of, and... and a son and daughter. They're still on Earth. I'm sorry, Bailey. Yeah, I'm just like everyone else. I'm losing myself and things I can control. And at the moment, that means creating the illusion of security here. Anything important going on around here? <laughs> you kidding? With the Reapers running roughshod through the galaxy, it seemed like the Council is in constant session. We got more ambassadors and dignitaries here than ever before pleading their cases. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. Yep. It was Udina who made you a commander, huh? Yeah, he's become an even bigger shot around here. Got a lot of ambition. He suspected Executor Palin was conspiring against the Council and had me investigate. Find anything incriminating? Yeah, enough to arrest him. When Palin resisted, I was forced to kill him. Udina rewarded me with the Very promotion. cop mentality. And near as I can tell, being a commander just means I'm putting out different fires. Like, unless they're, like, pointing a gun at your head, you're not forced to kill anybody. You know what I mean? So... If someone's just trying to escape or run away, like, you're not, y you make the decision to kill them. You could incapacitate them, you know, you could, you could shoot your, their leg or something, you know. You're not forced to kill someone unless they're, like, attacking you with an intent to kill. So I find that excuse very shoddy. Uh, it's a choice. Um, I think that was everything. It'll probably get worse before it gets I'm just back, a... Bailey. Yeah, if it ever gets Just a uh, sparkling, shining <laughs> beacon of hope. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, Jean de Bao. Shoot. Uh, no. Well, oh, shoot. Are you part of the DLC? No, you're not. You're like... He's freaking like a... Uh... What's the word? I can't believe also that they've... They just put everything in one... There's no, like, main missions and, like secondary missions it's all just boom. <laughs> it's all just it's not the Cerberus lab hmm where is it oh it was an email it was an email so I wouldn't have it in here yet apparently so yeah, they're like priority. These. So cash, that's the Solarian homeworld. And that's the thing is this game gets really stressful. Like I mentioned, like the the, the list gets overwhelming. Um, but what it is also is that like uh, you feel like you have to go 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 on the main mission, right? It's like ah, like I need to do all these these super important things. But like if you do that you're going to fail, right? Like, you're not going to do well <laughs> in the end. And uh, so you need to do some of these side things. So probably soon here we'll be doing some side missions um, since we already did a main mission. And I usually try to do, yeah, like a main mission, a few side missions, a main mission, a few side missions. 
Um, because also, like, yeah, if you just and also if you just go pell mell down the main storyline for a bit, and then you turn around and you're like, I should do some side quests. You have a list of like thirty, and you're like, <laughs> you know. So it's good to try to keep on top of it. Um, shoot. Okay, I will save because if this starts like a DLC, I don't want to start. I don't want to start a DLC, but I I recognize the name. Commander Shepard, John Dumbal, Special Tactics and Recon. I've got intel suggesting that high-level Hanar officials may be in Hanar. That's a damning accusation. What have you got? Evidence of an Alliance Black Ops team raiding a Batarian research station. The Batarians oh, were studying yeah. Reaper technology. The Batarians had Reaper they technology. They did. The Alliance raid turned into a massacre. And the humans ended up with nothing. Your people faked a power failure to hide the incident. The Batarians would have gone to war if they'd found out. But how does this implicate the Hanar? They maintained discreet gray market trade relationships with the Batarians and led the Alliance. To really? Trade. We suspect those Hanar operatives escaped with Batarian tech. The Hanar? If the reports on the Reapers are accurate, they could already be indoctrinated. What's your source on all this? It was an anonymous gift. Kasum, that's what it is! That's what it is! Kasumi, you're hunting a thief? A master thief. Her intelligence and skill are almost Solarian. I'm sure she'd appreciate praise from the Spectre who's chasing her down. I only need her data. I admire her personally. And since she sent me this, I assume her feelings are mutual. It's true. Oh, that's why I remember. I was like, I feel like this is like a fairly important thing. That's why I was worried it was a DLC. <laughs> okay, okay. Kasumi. I don't think Kasumi rejoins us. Um, but you do get to see everybody. I can't remember. Tally rejoins us. Liara Garris, obviously. I guess I can't remember. Okay, so I, I was thinking, because I keep like being like, oh, I want to start DLCs. Um, so I'm looking at the list of Mass Effect 3 DLCs, because we have all of them. They're all integrated. Um, we have From Ashes, which uh, I do know that one. Uh, we will. I don't know when we will get that. But we do get a new squad mate from that, and he's very interesting. Um, we have the extended cut, obviously, which I realize, like, they, uh, I haven't really gotten into it, I guess. But, like, this, this game was fairly controversial when it came out. Um, not because of the content, necessarily, but because of the ending. <laughs> um, it, I'm sure most people have heard by now, it's actually, and I've said it before, but it's actually the reason I started playing Mass Effect was because, like they say, like, no, bad press, like, there's no such thing as bad press, you know, kind of, uh, which, you know, you could argue, but, like, I remember hearing that people were up in arms, very upset about the ending of Mass Effect 3, and I was like, at the time, I was like, oh, that seems a bit odd, and I was just like, my, my initial thought was like, well, what, why were people so invested in this series? Like, they had three games that they were so, that they were this upset, you know? I'm like, what made this series get people so invested that they were so upset by the ending, you know? So I was curious, and so I started Mass Effect 1, and I had a strep throat one day, several years ago, and I was hooked from the start. <laughs> I was hooked. Um, but we have, so we have, where is, oh my gosh, there's so many. General content, yes. So the extended end, which was good. Uh, the firefight pack, which gives you assault rifles, weapons, and stuff. Leviathan, yes. Leviathan's a big one. Um, and the ground side resistance packs, just weapons, alternate appearance packs, and we have the Omega DLC and the Citadel DLC. How could I forget? It's actually one of the. It is probably. It is the best DLC I've ever played. Maybe barring Witcher 3's DLCs, which were ex especially the final DLC for Witcher 3 was really really good. But honestly, I probably like Citadel DLC better. It's it's phenomenal. It's so fun. Um. There's also a couple other DLC packs that have other weapons and stuff, but those were, like, promotional, and I'm not sure. There's, like, a Reckoner Knight armor. Is that the one I just got? That might be the one I just got. So do they have all of these in here? It was acquired, apparently, by playing the demo for Kingdoms of Amor Reckoning, which I own and never played. Um, actually, I started it, and then I was like... What? And, like, I don't know. I was like, oh, I'll get back to it. And I never did. <laughs> but I'm, I should check. I should check the Legendary Edition and see if this is, um, they have all of these things. That's interesting. Anyway, I'm sorry. I've just been chatting again. 
And such a chatterbox. I can't help it. Uh, but yes, we can do this. And also, this one is pretty funny. What do you need me to do? The Hanar operative is now a diplomat on the Citadel. I don't have a public name, and the Hanar will go to ground if I make a formal inquiry. So we're hunting? I'm tracking suspicious transmissions to the Hanar homeworld. I could use Oh, yes. Let me see what I can dig up at the Spectre office. Thanks, Shepard. And for the record, not everyone doubted your concerns about the Reapers. I just hope we're not too late. Well, that's news to me because the Salarian Counselor was like my most adamant, you know, uh... So... Kazumi! <laughs> KG's gray box from Donovan Hawk, the one with information that could start a war. I thought we destroyed that information to keep you safe. There were enough clues left for me to piece things together when I got curious. It was big enough to leak it to Bao. If you don't mind me tagging along cloaked, maybe I can help you dig up some dirt on the My game. Of My game? Hello? I'd appreciate it. This is where she talks to you. Also, he could dig up stuff in the Hanar spec or in the uh, in the Spectre office. Why do I gotta do it? Spectre access codes can bypass privacy settings and track financial data, transit records, and personal communications for all employees in the Hanar Embassy. To avoid triggering surveillance countermeasures, embassy files must be accessed on site. Nav point and consoles are access points with relevant information will be tagged in the Spectre's Omni tool. Oh my gosh, where where the KGB? Like what the heck? We're just, maybe that's an archaic reference, but like, considering this is very futuristic, but like, oh my gosh, how big brother of us. It's all for the good of humanity, or what, everybody, but yeah, uh-huh. Dang it, I thought this was one. Are you one? No. Kasumi, point me to the, okay, hang on. I'm gonna check in with you, Dina. I would love it if Kasumi was with me, it'd be so funny. Shepard? Um, You're a Citadel Council. Oh, okay. Don't you? I wasn't sure. Rest assured, I know I can move mountains. Do not lose sight. I should go. I'll be, I'll here. be here. I wasn't sure if it was going to, like, like, we could get, like, an update on, like, the political situation or anything. Anyway. What am I doing right now? What do you what do you want me to do? Terminal. Where terminal? Four in the embassy suites. Oh, I mean this is where the Hanar is over here, isn't he? It? I don't know. I can't. I don't know if they have genders actually. Now that I think about it. Where? Where terminal? Ah, there's a cat under the desk. Reapers, the same term once Terminal. I see you in there, traitor. Spell, I have some possible hits. Got some strange money transfers on Balone, and Alun is sending a lot of data. Balone's clean. His money transfers are to support his mistress. Not sure about Alun. Oh, they do have gender. I'll check Alun's personal records and pull his recent messages. Can I just note how? <laughs> You know, if Bao catches up... What? If I join up? Last time I did that, you wrote me into a suicide mission. We lived! I didn't say you had to join up. You were working your way around to it. Come on! You know, it'll be fun! Terminal in the holding bay. Okay. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Oh, dang, no way, that's the docking air, no. Yeah, wrong one. Now arriving at Holding one area. One moment, Is this the place where all the refugees are? Now arriving at docking bay e it is. Bao, Olun's doing some heavy lobbying for the Hanar to support the war effort. So he's clearly not indoctrinated. Who's opposing him? An unnamed Hanar recently posted here from Kaje. I'll check transit records for income. It all comes down to the war, and you trying to pull every- And we're already in it! Would you rather the Reapers win? No. And I owe you for getting KG's gray box back from Hawk. But I can't do another collector base, Shep. The Reapers aren't people. 
Yeah. She's really not specialized for this, you know. I'm not trying. She's acting like I'm trying to rope her in, and I'm like, I'm not. I, I haven't even said anything, but. Oh, still here further? Oh, great. But there's all this stuff in the refugee area that I want to look at. Out of the docking bay. Wait, please. My family's on board. Just let them land. I'll pay. This isn't about money. The wards are already at capacity for refugees. There's just no room. You let Asari in here earlier. That's back when we had space. Where is my family supposed to go? I don't know, all right. But they can't land here. You can't. This one's really tough because you really do. You can't. Like, what are you good? You're gonna end up having civil unrest if you have too many people in one place with not enough supplies, right? But, like, I feel like you can't just turn people away. Like, where are they gonna go? You know? And it's just, but it's like, do you save the most amount of people? I don't know. I realize it's dumb, but I, I'm gonna support the refugee. Sure, you can't squeeze in a few more people, officer. And who the heck are you? Oh, Commander Shepard. Uh, if that's what you think, I'll, uh, I'll find them some room. So my family can dock? Commander Shepard says your family's cleared. Just tell them to hurry. I... Thank you, Commander. Thank you so like, much. Like, we, we're just gonna have to figure it out, you know? But, like, again, like, space is at a premium. Like, you can't, you can't fit more people into an area when it's full, you know? <laughs> like, you just... Bleh. I do like this area, though. I like that a lot of these areas have really nice views of the, like, docking areas in the Citadel. I don't know, I just have fond memories of, like, staring this down sometimes, you know? It's just really beautiful. Not just my ship, but, like, the whole, like, the Citadel arms, you know? Like, the really beautiful, like, kind of, like, nebula look that it's got. <sighs> this is the missing wall like people that are missing i'm not sure why they put a picture an actual picture of thane on there and unless they're just like we need a picture of a drill and like picked thane and like threw it on there but that's thane so it's like all right you do that i think i made a huge deal out of this guy praying the first time i played because it's not not a thing i think so you usually think solarians do but um i can't remember we talked talk with morden about like Salarian beliefs. There's a variety. What was your name again? Christophe Vassel. Good to meet you. How long have you been here? I don't know how long it was since I escaped Leo. Do you know Leo? No. Oh, this human's trying to be friendly with the Batarian. Which Batarians, uh, they, if you guys don't remember, they, uh, well, like, I think when humans were granted an ambassador, uh, or something, they, uh, they protested by leaving the Citadel. Like, they don't, they, they no longer had, like, a, what's the word? Like, an ambassador or, like, a, an embassy. They no longer had an embassy at the Citadel. Um, also because they, the council was like, no, you can't practice slave trading. And the Batarians were like, it's our culture! You know, and so they were like, no, we're going to leave, you know. Um, but now you see Batarians here for the first time in a long time um, uh, on the Citadel. Her armor is interesting. <laughs> Later there will be like a kid here and it's really sad and it's talking to the Durian and it's really sad. But, oh yeah, also there's this, there's these places, little refugee camps. We do eventually do stuff in all of these places. Mm, that's right. The Batarians are very... Oh, look at that. Terminus armor, it does look cool. Please observe all cast 
restrictions when making a purchase. Please rub <laughs> all. That's right. This is the Batarian State Arms. Stand strong for your people with Batarian State Observe Arms. Observe caste restrictions when purchasing. Then they wouldn't let me purchase. I'm not a Batarian. I am trying to find that terminal, but let's check on those. <gasps> oh, it's right. Garrus is in here. And have we heard anything from the hospital? The surgeons there are all busy. Keep on it. Some of these wounded don't have much time. You are looking at CI model 1.7 AGB, Commander Shepard. <laughs> Please see a store clerk to unlock a demo. This model doesn't even sound like me. You have a copy of a Shepard VI. The one based on that war hero? We locked it after some kid spilled soda over the hardware. I'll unlock it, but we've only got the demo version working. Good to meet you. I'm Commander Shepard, Alliance... I don't sound like that. Extranet says you're Alliance military. Take care of yourself out there, officer. Oh, that's so weird. There's nothing this galaxy can't beat if we all work together. That's so weird that people would have a VI of me. Shepard. What's happening? We convinced the council to accept our wounded. Nowhere else to go. How bad is it? More dead than injured. 85% killed in action. We'll need a morgue soon. Not a lot of flesh wounds when you're fighting rapers. I just... Then I feel like we would just be eradicated within a week, honestly. Like, they're like, it took a century to kill off the Protheans. And I'm like, well, freaking, sounds like they're going to do it in about a month for us. Like... Just the amount of casualties, the number of people dying, and I realize there's billions and billions of people in the galaxy right now, like in this in this world. But like, when you lose like so many people all at once, like I can't imagine that you have any chance of fighting back. You just fight for to survive another day, you know. Casualties are that high. Our front line units are being wiped out, whole platoons at a time. A single Reaper can destroy nine or ten of them in one attack. That's not war. It's slaughter. They're called Reapers for a reason. And these guys found out why. Do what you can for them. A few of them might get back on their feet, but the rest... Sympathy is about all we can offer. Any sign of your family? Not yet, but I keep hoping. What about you? I'm starting to see, see this, Garrus. See, this is why. See, he's the only one who asks me that. Like everybody else is like, sometimes like Liar will offer like help and stuff on things, but like Garrus is the only one who can see that Shepard is really feeling it and who will ask her about it and be like, "Listen, buddy, like it's me and you, you know." I won't lie. It's been rough. Well, don't forget to come up here. I just. There's a lot more war to go. Like I get romancing him, and I'm sure it's like a, it's it's like a really nice romance, honestly. I'm sure, but uh, he's just such a good friend that it's like it's it would be it's kind of weird I've got a to list think of. of. Our arrivals, Bal. Forwarding it to you. On it. Maybe we'll find me. So how's the rest of the gang? Met up with anybody else? Garrus is helping out on the Normandy. He never could pass up a good fight. What about Jacob? Haven't heard from him. See, Jacob could have gotten me back onto the oh, okay. Normandy. I'm yeah. Bow, here's the point. I've got it. A recent arrival. Zemendis. Soul name regards the works of the Enkindlers in despair. He was with the Alliance team that massacred the Batarians. He's been on special research assignment ever since. So, he got his tentacles on some Reaper tech. Looks that way. I'm sending you the nav point for his office. I'll meet you there. Quick, quick, quick. The episode's gonna Welcome. go long. I might edit out. Maybe I'll edit out. <laughs> One moment, Maybe me just talking. Blah, blah, blah. Because this mission's fun.
We are two specters. Zamandis. Plus an invisible lady. Or should I say, regards the works of the Enkindlers in despair? It seems this one has been apprehended, but confinement is irrelevant. The work of the Enkindlers cannot be stopped. Why are you trying to help the Reapers? We obtained information regarding the Enkindlers from classified sources. The Enkindlers? You mean the Protheans? Yes. As you are aware, Commander Shepard, the Protheans eventually became the Collectors, and the Collectors serve the Reapers. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Yeah. Therefore, as a faithful servant of the Enkindlers, we too must serve the Reapers. You big stupid. <laughs> yes. You know, I support religious freedom for all species, but that's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Your skepticism <laughs> that's just does crazy. not matter. When the Enkindlers uplift us as their chosen sapiens, the galaxy will bear witness. You're insane, and we can't allow you to endanger your planet. We are taking you into custody. Your belief in your victory is mistaken. Our planetary defense network is largely automated. It can be disabled with a single virus. That, uh, doesn't sound good. Which I have just uploaded. Damn it. Wait. A virus would be detected unless sent on low priority channels, which have a time lag. I may be able to block the upload. You may be delayed. Uh, why is the human helping? I'll handle this. I love this. Got it. Uploads disabled. Looks like we're in the. Wait. He's got some kind of failsafe. Get down. Good thing her invisibility. She was here the entire activates. Time. She was an old friend. I intended to arrest her. She helped me take down the Collectors, and she just gave her life to save the Hanar homeworld. We're really not gonna, like, try to find her invisible body? Well, taken. It was an honor to work with you, Shepard. When the time comes, I'll be there to return the favor. With a few friends. And then she's like, get up, Kasumi. <laughs> I know you're okay. <laughs> you can come out yeah. now. Yeah. How'd you know? Lucky guess. There's no way you're recruiting me to fight in a galactic war. The Crucible Project needs technical experts. I'm not a scientist. No, but you're the best thief in the galaxy. And you can hack unfamiliar technology better than anyone. They could use your help. And think of it. All that expensive tech just lying around. It's not like they're gonna check your pockets at the end of the project. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> I do. All right. I'm in. And Shep, nice working with you. I think this is an ideal use of her skill set. Honestly, somebody made the argument that having her, like, be part of the, like, Suicide Squad was a bit odd because her skill set didn't really fit. She's she's an infiltration and, like, uh, was, like, sabotage expert, you know? If we could have, like, snuck her into the Collector base, she maybe could have done some stuff, but, like... Like some interesting things and she did do like for me i think i had her doing the um yeah i had her doing the the tunnel where she could like she's, she's a technical expert so she was able to unlock things as we went as we went along um so she did kind of do an infiltration thing there um but you know if we could have like dropped her in in a different place and like had her sneak around she could have placed like explosives and stuff and she's also good like she said like sneaking into parties and like dealing with people you know what i mean and like stealing things and stuff like that so it was kind of odd to have her on like a suicide mission where like we kind of just went full frontal really as as much as we could essentially um but i i think her skill set is still really useful if we had been able to like utilize it properly but like i said like the the bounds of the game there's only so much you could do when you're making a game you can't take every single thing into account you have to kind of keep it limited so um but yeah for this i think this is exceptionally good like she can help like hacking unfamiliar technology like she said but she can also acquire things and that's huge right now with supply chains being a mess so anyway it was nice to see kasumi i wish we could have seen a little bit more of her um but it is nice. We'll, we'll get to see everybody. Morden, Samara, everyone. Um, Jack. But I think the only one we have... We have a DLC companion coming. We have Tally. 
Am I just, like, forgetting a bunch of people? Because actually, like, like, a lot of the rooms go unused on the ship, as far as I remember. Uh, like, Thane's room never has anything in it anymore. Nobody's in it. Um, Kasumi, Samara, like, all those rooms don't have people in them. They just kind of leave them empty, which I don't mind. It's kind of nice to, like, you know, go and, like, sit and think about things sometimes if you want. But, ooh, sorry. Um, but I'm going to call this one here. Hopefully it's not too terribly long. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons. To all my patrons, but to especially Risco, you don't mess up to your patron. Thank you so much for your support. I think I just heard a knock on the door, and if that is, and somebody can hear me, I'm mortified. Um, but, uh, and an extra special shout out to Christopher, who is my three-tier patron, who is a super, super bestest, and I super, super appreciate your support. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.